listening to Radio Maria, a Christian voice in your home. We now return to Vigilant Heart with Annie Carto. And my guest tonight is Father Michael Sliney, a Legionary of Christ priest. Father, we have a Joan from Florida on the line. Joan, okay. do you have a question? Hi, hi, Annie, and hello, Father. Uh, I, I'm really calling in just to say thank you for your vocation. I, uh, my mom is, I'm calling from Florida, but my mother is 96 years old. She'll be 96 in August, and she lives in Cheshire, Connecticut. So I spend a lot of time um, at, I believe it's called your mother house in Cheshire, and yes, have worked you. closely with um, Father Kermit and um, done several retreats. So uh, again, I just want to thank you for your vocation. Um, I, my understanding is in your Washington, D.C. Is, is yes. that correct? Yes, it's correct. And, in it, it, and are, are you working with youth in ministry or are you connected with a parish? I, I just was a little uncertain about that. Maybe you could sure. tell us a little bit about your, your daily work. Okay, yeah, I, I, I've been here over 20 years, and I did start a whole bunch of youth programs that are still running. There's a younger priest, Father Andrew Gennady and Father Mariano, who are running the youth programs with our two seminarians, and those programs are still going. I guess I'm kind of mentoring Father Andrew a little bit, so I'm still helping it indirectly, but I'm, my, main, my main purpose right now is to be the chaplain to the Lumen Institute. So we have... 20 uh, business leaders who I see regularly in spiritual coaching, spiritual direction. And I also have another dozen um, young fellows, so young men who are connected to these older guys as mentees who I also direct. And we do a lot of mission work, outreach, and I also obviously help with our work at Our Lady Bethesda Retreat Center. We do marriage prep there and we have a lot of retreats there. So I, I try to be available to help when I can. Oh, thank you. And again, I thank you for your vocation and your work. And I so enjoyed listening um, to you talk to us about, you know, your your thoughts and prayers with the virus and certainly our, our journey that we're going through now during Lent. So thank you and God bless. Thank you, Annie. Thank you, Joan. Thank you for yeah, calling Thank you, Joan. Very grateful, Joan. Thanks. Father, you know, you mentioned this is about the timing of this was it being lent and jesus asked us to take up our cross and follow him daily yes. but i also you know this this lent has been especially as you've said painful for so many people how can we really exercise that charity in our own homes um, I think that's where it should start. And if you, if you have any tips, because you work with families and the breakdown of the family has been monumental. And well, just would you give us some tips on what you, how you've worked with families to bring them back together? Okay, well, I mean, I, I would start with prayer, right? I mean, there, there's a mm -hmm. lot of uh, psychological tactics and attitudes we need to cultivate but I, I really think it starts with prayer and it starts with the love for christ and you mm -hmm. know if jesus is not on your schedule right now it's not going to go well if our blessed mother is not in your day it's going to be a long day so for me it's really simple and I, I gave a few little tips i think everyone should i mean my first words from my bed literally from my bed are usually around 5 15 in the morning and from my bed i say jesus i love you this day is for you those are my first words. So hopefully you can have a thought like that to start your day. Jesus, I love you. This day is for you. And, you know, before, even maybe even before you have your cup of coffee, you know, to, mm -hmm. to open scripture and to look at the gospel of the day and to, to ask Jesus what he's telling you. To maybe, maybe say a decade or the rosary if you have time in the morning and ask our blessed mother to sweeten you, to soften you. I mean, one thing I found, Annie, and, and this is something my mother taught me early on. I mean, I've been praying the rosary since I've been 16, every day of my life. And wow. and, the, and the folks who pray the rosary, including my mom, there's mm -hmm. just a sweetness about them. I mean, I, I'm, those who know me know I'm not always so sweet, but I'd be a lot worse <laughs> if I didn't have our blessed mother. I'll tell you that right now, right? So I would just say the, 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 the men and women, and I know a lot of business leaders who do this, who pray the rosary, are just a little sweeter. 
They're just a little softer. They're just a little more gentle. And it's really that simple. Making time for the rosary and making time for scripture-based prayer. And, and, and I would also say, you know, if you do have that one person, you know, that one son or daughter, or maybe right now it's your husband or wife, who's really hard for you, think, okay, how can I, how can I gain graces for someone I love right now? You know, have an intention. I'm going to offer this up. For my nephew who's, you know, under the weather, I'm going to offer this up for my aunt who has cancer. I'm going to offer this up for my friends who are going through a divorce. But, you know, have, having that intentionality can be helpful. And I guess one last, one simple thought, you, you know, the home is technically a domestic church, right? That's mm-hmm. uh, an expression St. John Paul coined. And we can forget the home isn't just a place where we go to bed and have meals and do our homework and do our laundry. It's a place, hopefully, where Christ resides, I, I love blessing homes as a priest because I remind people, you have an invisible brother in your home. His name is Jesus. And guess what? He's kind of watching and he wants to help. <laughs> and he really wants to be consoled by you. And he wants to be touched by you. And he wants to touch your sister, your little sister through you. Can you do that for him? He's watching. He's here. He cares. So being aware of Christ's presence, I think, can be really helpful too. So hopefully, hopefully those tips can be helpful. Oh, very, very much so, Father. You mentioned St. John Paul II. Uh, I know Denver, the World Youth Day in Denver, 1993, was a, a significant moment for you. Yes, and very powerful. T- tell us about that, Father, and how, you know, our faith plays a role now, too. Even sure. with the scandals in the church, we should be proud to be Catholic Yes. and really let that light shine speak to us more about okay. this well any it's I'll, I'll share you know um uh, my first my first visual of saint john paul was when i was in seventh grade i was homesick uh which was rare because i didn't really want to be sick because i would miss outdoor sports after school <laughs> so i was really sick and i remember just um putting on the tv you know back then and and i saw pope john paul on television he had just been shot he had just been assassinated, you know, his life was almost taken. So that was my first visual, and I was fascinated by this pope. It was my first time I saw him. And I went to Rome, and back in 1990, my mom and dad came to visit. We went to a papal rosary, of all things, a little rosary in the Vatican Library with a couple hundred people. And the pope came by, and he stopped and, and blessed my dad. And then my mom looked him in the eyes. She had a rosary in her hand. And, and the pope asked my mom, um, is your son a priest? And my mom looked at looked Pope John Paul in the eyes. Not yet. He's still studying. And then he looked me in the eyes. And I had this photo. In my, I'm looking at it right now in my room. And he smiled and said he will be a priest. That was wow. that was in May of 1990, eight years before I was ordained. So wow. 1993 was World Youth Day, and we brought a bunch of kids to Denver, and it was incredible. It was my first World Youth Day, and I brought a whole, you know busload of guys out there and um it was very powerful but one thing the pope said and i'll never forget it and he said it he was reading it first he read it he said be proud to be catholic you know as is part of a speech and then he stopped <laughs> and then he said be proud be proud to be catholic and everyone just went crazy everyone went crazy and i remember crying saying this is so incredible to be catholic here with the pope and, and it was interesting because many years later I guess through God's providence, I became friends with with Monsignor Mietek Mokritsky, who is Pope John Paul's second secretary. So because of that friendship, I was able to, you know, be pretty close, I guess, to him and have maybe a little more access to Pope John Paul. And and one thing one thing that uh, Monsignor Mietek, who's now the Archbishop of Lvov, very holy priest, he told me, he said, you know, Pope John Paul, and then he was also Pope Benedict's secretary. Pope John Paul, Pope Benedict's biggest concern, their biggest worry, he told me, was that Catholics are no longer proud to be Catholic. Catholics are embarrassed to be Catholic. And that hurt the Pope so much. And I think it hurts Christ so much. And we're not being arrogant. We're not being obnoxious. But our church was founded by Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago. We have the fullness of the faith, the fullness of the sacraments. We have the Blessed Mother guiding us. We have the saints overlooking us and protecting us. We have so much example and so much doctrine and so much goodness. And yeah, we also have a lot of sin and there's a lot of misery right now, but let's not let the sin overshadow the good. 
and, and the sacrament of life we have access to. So I, I always, Amen. Um, a healthy balance, right? But I really think we should be extremely grateful to God for being Catholic. There's no better religion in the world. Amen. Amen. Well spoken, Father. We have Karen on the line. Karen, do you have a comment or question for Father Michael? Um, yes, Father. I just wanted to make a comment in when you first started, you said that we are overburdened and restless. And I agree with that. And I'm even more concerned now because I spend time on Cape Cod in the summer and I just received a message from my friends there that the bishop of the Diocese of Falls River has closed all the churches until further notice and that we should do spiritual communion. Could you speak more about that? I'm just totally terrified. Okay, well, you know, this is something, first of all, this is a whole new thing that's going on right now, right? I mean, I don't think any of us in our lifetime have ever experienced anything like this, so we're all trying to adjust accordingly. And, you know, I think it's very important that we are obedient to the civil authorities, especially when what they're suggesting makes sense. And, you know, and also be obedient to our bishops and trust that, you know, that they've taken this to prayer and they've taken it to God and, and, you know, they, they do have to look for the, not just the spiritual, but also for the physical health of the people. And it's hard for me. It's hard for all the priests out there. We, we want to be with all of you. We want to be, you know, leading you in daily mass and, and be very close to you. We also have to be careful. I know that six priests have died in Lombardy, Italy, six. And there's several that are really sick right now. And I'm not saying, um, you know, it, it, it's because of bad indications. But I do think a healthy prudence is right now anyway, um, a healthy prudence is, is a good thing. And um, thankfully, you know, God in his own mysterious way will bless this obedience and his grace will come through other means. And like I said, at least I'm looking at a beautiful image of Our Lady Guadalupe in my room. I have Our Lady of Fatima on my desk. I have St. Therese looking at me at my desk, St. Joseph. I have an image of St. John Paul. I've got a crucifix. So right here in my little room, I've got a little sanctuary of images that help bring me closer to God. And I would just trust that it, it, Christ is in your house right now. Your house is going to be your chapel, and Christ will speak to you. Thank you, Father. I'm sure it's true. I just finished doing the consecration to St. Joseph, and I just finished reading Father Michael, Father Michael Gately's new book, 33 Days to Greater Glory. So I'm a trusting. Great. Very, yeah, I, I, I really like that book. That's a great book. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. That was a great question. Thank you so much for calling in. And Father, you, you spoke about Our Lady leaning into Mary. And I'd like to share a prayer now to Our Lady of Guadalupe for the protection from the coronavirus. Holy Virgin of Guadalupe, Queen of the Angels, and Mother of the Americas, we fly to you today as your beloved children. We ask you to intercede for us with your son as you did at the wedding in Cana. Pray for us, loving mother, and gain for our nation and world and for all our families and loved ones the protection of your holy angels that we may be spared the worst of this illness. For those already afflicted, we ask you to obtain the grace of healing and deliverance. Hear the cries of those who are vulnerable and fearful. Wipe away their tears and help them to trust in this time of trial and testing. Teach all of us in the church to love one another and to be patient and kind. Help us to bring the peace of Jesus to our land and to our hearts. We come to you with confidence, knowing that you truly are our compassionate mother, health of the sick and cause of our joy. Shelter us under the mantle of your protection. Keep us in the embrace of your arms. Help us always to know the love of your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Father, speak to those people out there now. You know, I recently had a little day of reflection with a group of women, and I said, if the world ever needs a mother, it needs one now, a gentle, most perfect mother. Speak to us, Father, about Our Lady and how she can help guide us through this and your own relationship with our Blessed Mother. Sure. Well, you know, having having lost my own mother two years ago, uh, and Mary's always been close, but now she's even closer. I think for all of you that have lost your mother, 
I think the blessed mother does jump in and really wants to be more present. Um, you know, for me, it's a pretty, it's a pretty simple relationship, Annie, for me. I, I, I just, um, I feel she's always accompanying me. I have an image of her in my car <laughs> on the dashboard. I have an image on my iPad and my iPhone. Um, the images help. I, I really find that just looking at her helps to actually see her and not just praying the rosary, but you know, sometimes just looking at her and having a conversation an intimate sharing from the heart, um, from a son to his mother, from a daughter to his mother. And, you know, Mary accompanied Jesus to the cross. Mary, I can tell you, my mother, <laughs> I'm a priest. And if it wasn't for my mother, I wouldn't be as strong as I am right now. I get emotional talking about it because my strength comes from her, right? And, wow. and I really think that for all of you, you're going to find tremendous strength in her blessed mother. She's calm. She is reassuring. She's telling us to trust. She's telling us to, to know that, you know, that she's watching over us. And so is Christ and it might lead to the cross. It might lead to your cross, but mm -hmm. she's going to get you through it. And Jesus is going to get you through it. It doesn't mean it's all going to end well, but they're going to give you the strength and comfort you need to be the person God wants you to be right now. And I yes. think that's what we should all be praying for. You know, I remember Absolutely. I, I had a, I had a meeting with John McCain once. Um, we, we had this little internship course. We would bring our kids to meet different people. And he was telling us about his time in captivity. Um, you know, when he was with uh, all these other prisoners and the Vietnamese were treating him really harshly. And, and he said that he wasn't necessarily praying that God liberate him. He, he was praying that God would give, give him the strength to endure whatever he wanted, whatever his will was. Mm. And he prayed, he prayed that prayer, and, and it was an interesting story because they tortured him. And every night they would tie his hands basically behind his head and, and, and put him in this really weird posture so he couldn't sleep at night. And every night a guard would come in and loosen that knot. And he told us on the day it was released, that guard walked up to him with a smile and drew the sign of a cross with his boot in the dirt. He was a Christian. And that was God's way of saying, you know, I, I knew what you could handle. I wasn't going to give you more than you can handle. So I sent this little angel to untie that knot. And I think God typically sends us little angels and helps us manage when it gets too hard. And, and that's what devotion to Mary and Jesus do. They help us manage tough times. Absolutely, Father. And, and lastly, you had a quote on your blog from St. Therese, The Little Flower. The world is thy ship, not thy home. In these last yeah. minutes, Father, and then I'll ask you to close with your priestly blessing. Okay. Help sure. us to look to that eternal, eternal home with our Lord you know, and our Lady. There's a, there's a beautiful gift someone gave me that I have in my office, and it's a little tiny boat, and it's a replica of the boat that the sister Celine gave her sister Santeres. And you probably, maybe some of your viewers are familiar with this boat, but the title of the boat is called Abandonment. And on the sail of the boat, it said, my heart, I sleep, but my heart watches. I sleep, but my heart watches. And then it had an image of Jesus sleeping with a little ball, which was Therese sleeping next to Jesus. And I think, you know, that, that idea of Jesus being in the boat, Jesus watching over us, Jesus never abandoning us or jumping out of the boat should give us a tremendous amount of trust that you know what he's got things under control and maybe maybe we're going to go through some rough seas maybe we're going to go through some heavy storms and high winds and maybe we're not going to see where we're going sometimes it's not going to make sense and that's kind of the way you know god can operate it's not always clear but we have to trust that he is going to lead us to safe port and he does have a plan and his plan is the best plan Sometimes it's a torturous plan. Sometimes it's a plan that's, you know, very painful. There's always some, some light. There's always some joy. There's always some peace. But sometimes it can get tough. And that's okay. Because we have to trust that he is going to get us to where we need to go. Not just us, but all the souls to whom he's entrusted us. And, and I think trust is what we all need right now. Trust in, in God the Father and Jesus our brothers. Mercy and love and protection during these tough times. Amen, Father. I'd just like to ask you for a final blessing and, and a thought, if you have any more you'd like to share with our Radio Maria family. You've been a wonderful. I just thank you so much for... I'm happy, happy to help. 
um, answering that <laughs> answering the holy spirit <laughs> this was uh last okay well minute. let's let, let's mm -hmm. just let's just offer this little prayer in the father and son holy spirit amen okay. jesus we we look at your sacred heart looking down on humanity right now we know that you are suffering with us we know that all the pain in the world not just physical but moral pain psychological pain you feel that you carry that we ask you to to help us trust in you to help us not just carry our cross right now but especially help others carry their cross help us be simon of cyrene and help us really help help all these souls who you want to help through us right now to be generous and not to forget that we can't we can't give what we don't have lord remind us of that this isn't willpower this isn't white knuckling this isn't i'm going to go out and do this we need your grace. We need your help. We need that time in our knees. We need that time close to your heart. We need to be looking into your eyes. We need to be leaning into the cross. And we need to be holding your blessed mother's hand. So walk with us, Lord. Be close to us and guide us through the storm. And help us remember that there's a lot of souls that you want to touch through us during this difficult time. And if we are generous and we are open to your plan, it's going to do tremendous good for us and for all, all these souls God's given us. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen.